All right, so we have an interesting move here. So uh, if you want to watch, you know, if you're a Bengals fan, make sure you stick around uh, for a bit in this video because I'm going to get into the film and kind of talk about what he does well, what I like about Orlando Brown Jr. and why I think he could fit in really well with this Bengals team and do a good job of uh, protecting Burrow. He's someone who has protected elite quarterbacks in the past. He obviously has protected Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, so now going to Joe Burrow, interestingly enough. But yes, uh, you know, Orlando Brown Jr., the guy who many considered to be the top tackle on the market, not the guy everyone considered to be the top tackle on the market. We'll get more into that in just a second. Uh, but, you know, Orlando Brown Jr. signs with the uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals of all teams. They need a tackle. They really wanted to get that left tackle position under control. They do now with uh, Orlando Brown Jr. signing a four-year, $64 million deal, which is doesn't seem that crazy uh I don't think um I, you know it's a you have a 31 million dollar signing bonus involved it's the most it's the largest signing bonus ever although again it's, it's not uh I, we, I'm yet to see the full guaranteed money here I'm assuming there's a lot more guaranteed money involved but you know it's worth mentioning that we just saw the Chiefs go out and pay Jawan Taylor a four-year 80 million dollar deal so they're paying more money for someone who I think many don't con many consider not as good of a player as Orlando Brown Jr. is. So uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It's definitely very interesting. I guess part of the deal was uh, Brown wanted to make sure he could stay at left tackle. But I mean, sure, he's a very good left tackle. I think, and again, we'll get into that when we get into the film. I I view this as a steal. Quite frankly, I thought he was going to get 23 ish million a year. The fact that he's getting significantly less, less than that is is awesome, really. I mean, you, you know, but about 16 million a year, if my math is correct, that feels fantastic. And I think that uh, Bengals fans have to be thrilled with this signing and the fact that, you know, they've been trying to sure up the offensive line. Doing it in a way like this is, uh, you know, it's just shocking to me, really. But uh, at the same time, for a Bengal, you know, for the Bengals' perspective, they must be thrilled, and I'm sure part of it is he just likes to fit, right? He likes the idea of being for a, playing for a competitive team because he always has played for competitive teams in his career. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting. Let's talk about why the Bengals should be thrilled about this. So let's start off with this chart. Good example of showing you know what Orlando Brown Jr. is. So this is you know PFF had him ranked as the eighth best available free agent or just free agent in general, you know, including guys who got uh, tagged. He was tagged last year, not this year, hits the open market. Uh, and you can see why, you know, to have him as a, you know, a $20 million a year average, that's, that was their projection for him, uh, for his contract. And over towards the right, you see some good numbers and really consistent numbers, I think. I mean, the guy's played a ton of snaps in these past three seasons, you know, uh, over 1,300 each of the past two years and, you know, over 1,000 in 2020. So that alone, at, at, totally add some value, uh, you know, good PFF war as well for his position. He's been a very good player for them. He hasn't been elite, but he's been very good and very consistent. Like, let's get into the film. Let's talk about, let's use some Super Bowl film, why don't we? He's a Super Bowl champion. Let's use that. So you see, uh, he's going to be blocking uh, Josh Sweat one-on-one. -on -one. That's what he's going to be doing. And right at the bat, look at how he uses kind of his long arms to get his hand placement to where he wants. That's something that he definitely does a good job of, I think, is hand placement. Uh, you know, sometimes guys can beat him with speed a little bit, but and, you know, we'll get more into that in a second. But definitely, if he can get the hand placement he wants, he's typically going to win. Watch was able to put, push Sweat back. Sweat eventually falls onto turf, but he I don't think he was getting a pressure there either way. So really good stuff from Orlando Brown Jr. to be able to, you know, hold off that block well enough. Uh, I think that's kind of, again, what he does, right? With offensive linemen, it's less of a can you block and more of a can you block consistently type question. And I would say yes, he blocks very consistently. Like this one's another example where what's going to happen, this time it's going to be the running game. Uh, you see he's going up one-on-one -on -one, uh, once again. Uh, so watch what happens. Look at how right when this play begins, again, gets the hand placement he wants in the run blocking game. And this is against Javon Hargrave, who is no slouch. In fact, you know, he's one of the best players in football. But as you see, Brown is able to hold off that block well enough to make sure that, uh, you know, Hargrave did not impact the play. It still didn't go for much, but, you know, he did a good job on that play, I would say, being able to, you know, uh, pull off that block. And these are the kind of things that you want to just see a guy be able to do, right? I always kind of talk about when I make film studies on linemen is it's a bit weird and a bit tough to do sometimes because it's a lot less about your highlight real level plays because you don't really have many highlight real level plays. You have some, but it's more about just consistency. And are you consistently winning? And he is. 
but there are still important things to look at, you know, in terms of just like, you know, highlight real level plays, something like this is a good example where it's going to be uh, a stunt that the Eagles are running, where you see how it kind of works, where the interior uh, defensive lineman and the edge rusher basically just switch places. Look at how when this play begins, you see that right here, okay, Brown is now passing off the edge rusher, but he has to get over and find a way to block Hargrave. So again, it's a difficult thing, and if you get yourself out of position, it can result in your quarterback getting clobbered. However, watch how Brown does able is able to get over there. He finishes off that block, and because of that, Mahomes had enough time to throw a touchdown on that play. So this is a great example of how like, listen, for offensive linemen, a lot of people kind of talk about, okay, you know, they don't get the attention they deserve, right? They certainly don't. No one uh, really talks about offensive linemen unless they're one of the best. I think with the internet uh, kind of becoming a thing, people talk more and more about offensive linemen and not becoming a thing because, you know, it's been a thing for a minute now. But just like, you know, PFF grades and now make it easier for people to evaluate offensive linemen. I think the YouTube film study uh, c community has made it easier to talk about offensive linemen. But still, they don't get a ton of attention, but they're are still very important and a great one can add a ton of value and again is he, is he a great one oh you be the judge but I think he's a good one like going over here this is a good example I think of you know an issue maybe he has in his game Joseph Osai the guy who you know unfortunately for him uh this play would not be what he became known for in this game he would become known for uh something very poor in this game but you know let's talk about this play though it's not about Osai, Osai. let's talk about Orlando Brown Jr. uh Osai really had a good day against Brown and I think part of it is Brown isn't the best athlete that is the, I think a fair criticism towards him look at how one this play begins you see how Osai is really going to try to just use speed look at how far to the outside he gets so for Brown who's kind of using his long arms and kind of reaching out like that. Osai's far enough towards the outside at this point that Brown can't really use his hands. He has to use his feet now to get back into position, but th the issue is Osai is just faster. Watch Osai get around the edge, and he is going to be able to not tackle Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes is absurd and somehow still got rid of that football, but you know that's kind of the way you can beat Orlando Brown Jr. Listen, he's not a perfect tackle. He is not Trent Williams, right? But he's still a in my opinion, a franchise left tackle. He is still someone that you have and say, okay, we have our left tackle. We're good. He's that caliber of player, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of just how I view him. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Orlando Brown Jr.? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.